What's up guys? Welcome back to the ASAP Automotive channel and today we're going to be putting a stop to poor braking performance. So stay tuned. So, like I said, we're putting a stop to more braking performance today. Um, the brakes on this thing are toast. Um, that was my only downfall with these Z06s. Is I love the cars. It's been my dream car, yada, yada. But with the Z06, with all the great things that came with it, the only shortcoming is you pretty much got factory C5 brakes with it. There wasn't really any upgrade. Um, you know, I think the calipers were painted red or something. That's about it. So, that's what we're fixing today. Like we're done with a lot of the other stuff, you, we, you know, we're showing you guys you can swap around a bunch of factory stuff and make these cars a lot better. So we're ch once again taking some stuff from a C6 Z06 uh, and putting on here. That's where these brakes are coming from. Well, they're all brand new, but that's what they fit. So as you can see, this is one of the old rotors here off the front. Pretty beefy in stock form, and for most driving, it's cool. I think this is this. Uh, if I remember correctly, this looks like maybe a power stop rotor or something and I'm assuming probably the pads are we'll see as we take them off if there's any kind of indicators um, but they've definitely seen their day they've seen some hard braking which I have no idea how that happened but if you look closely on some of them I don't know if you can see it on this one but they're starting to get some hairline cracks on some of the cross drills I know me personally this car has been through some extreme braking that it probably should have never been uh, because of some other idiot in the road pulling out in front of me anyways I got a bunch of parts here in front of me we're going to give you the full list, run down all the part numbers and stuff um, whenever we get, you know, on the description and the link and all that. Um, the, so one thing with the calipers, when you're looking up calipers for these, there's not really a passenger and a driver's side. All you do is just switch. You buy one same part number because the, the Corvette is written the same way on either one back when they were both sides were available. Um, you just switch this crossover tube and the uh, bleeder screws to whichever side you need. So, like for cape inserts on this side, caliper is going to be mounted like this. This is obviously the driver side because you want your bleeders on the top side. It would be mounted like that on that side of the car over there because your air always rises to the top when you're bleeding out. That's how you want it. So, just pay attention to that when you're looking it up. Uh, when we give you the parts list, that's why there's going to be just one part number for the front calipers because they are the same. You just swap the lines around and the same thing for the rears same exact principle because you've got that's your fluid crossover some of the later models use a two-piece housing or whatever that has fluid going between it doesn't have any external lines like that but for this setup that's how they are and your little pads and everything fit down in there and you'll see a little bit so anyways that's our new front calipers we're going from a two piston in the front that's current now to a six piston um, just a little bit better braking. And in the rear, we're going from a single piston up to a four piston. So it be a hell of a difference in stopping in this car. Um, one of the things we're doing while we're in there is upgrading to stainless steel brake lines. Um, we got this kit from um, TPS uh, Motorsports. Um, seems to be pretty good. Everyone I've seen doing this conversion has used them and they seem to get really good reviews. Um, obviously, you know, we're big on power stop brakes here. So that's what we're going with for our brake pads. As you can see, there are a bunch of little pucks or pucklets, as I like to call them. And you'll see in a minute when we're installing them, how they go in there. Now, yes, some of you guys are going to rail me. I know some of the later stuff, they, you know, a lot of people have gone to single piece pads. Right now, I'm just doing this. Um, I'm going to kind of give this a go, see how this works for my driving style. Uh, if need be, I'll, we'll change from a different rotor or whatever, or change to a different pad. I know if I definitely do a track day, I'm going to go to a true track pad, but you don't really use those for daily driving because of squeaking and yada yada. So, but anyways, that's our front and rear pads for power stop. And like I said, we'll have the part numbers in the description below. Now, I did decide I wanted to go with the factory rotors, the factory C6 Z06 rotors, uh, mainly for cost. I mean, to be honest, I'm probably close to every bit of two grand deep in this. Uh, my wife's watching, no, it's more like 200. I'm sorry, take a zero off of that. Um, but anyways, this is one of the new front rotors. You see it is rather massive. Um, be careful when you're ordering these online. You know, like I said, we'll give you the part numbers. There are some that are very close. You get to some of like the Grand Sport, which is a little bit smaller, and some of the Cadillac ones, like you get on Amazon, they'll pop a bunch and you're not paying attention. You can click and order the wrong ones. 
Not that I speak from experience. But anywho, you can see the difference in size and rotors and a fair bit beefier. So now there is a disadvantage to this. Anything doing performance or modifications to your car, there's always only going to be at least some kind of drawback. It's give and take. It's all in your project and your end goal and where you want to go. I know that with this car. The downfall is this is a hell of a lot heavier than this. So these are about 25, 26 pounds a piece or something like that. It is unsprung weight, but it's still rotating mass. So I will lose a little bit. Now, eventually, the car is going to have a lot more power. That won't be an issue. Right now, I might notice a little bit, but it's worth it to me whenever I'm going from certain speeds on a closed course track over in Mexico, in Mexico, yeah, um, then I'm safe. Uh, that's my goal in SCAR is to build it from the ground up. We've done a lot of suspension stuff. We've still got more to do. We're going to do a brake stuff now. Um, and then we're going to start doing more driveline upgrades. And then finally, we're really going to start throwing some power to this car and really be able to enjoy it. So, but anyways, like I said, most of this stuff's factory GM stuff. We've got the, uh, the actual pins here. There's a part number kit for the front and a part number kit for the rear. They're the same pins. It's just really just a quantity. Um, Pretty, pretty sure they're the same pins. Um, but anyways, these are the pins that go in there and you'll see in just a minute how they go. So, that being said, we're really gonna start tearing this thing apart and start slinging some new parts on it. All right, so we've already gone through and gotten the wheels off. I mean, that's pretty simple. You know, it's just uh, a 19 millimeter or whatever for the lugs. Um, you get those off, get your wheels off, obviously have your vehicle jacked up safely, you know, to where you can actually work. Don't be an idiot. Use eye protection when you're using any kind of air tools. So the first thing we're going to do is we're completely changing the brakes. We're putting new rotors, new calipers, new pads, and everything. And actually, you're probably going to see these calipers again later on in brackets on my wife's uh, Firehawk that we just surprised her with the other day. We're actually going to upgrade the brakes on it and stuff, and we'll get into that later. But we're going with the new hoses and everything. So what we're going to do, for the sake of timing, speeding this along, we got two bolts back here, two 21 millimeters and hold the bracket to the knuckle itself. We're going to take those off. We're going to take these handy dandy caliper hangers. You can get anywhere, any Amazon, eBay, any parts store, any tool truck or whatever. I like these neon green ones because you see them. Especially if you do a ton of brakes like we do and you run a wide open all day, you don't forget them because you can't miss them. They're freaking neon. And if you do, you're a freaking idiot. Um, anyways, so we're going to go ahead and pull these two off. Uh, go ahead and hang this thing out of the way. Then we're going to slide our rotor off, and we're going to go ahead and clean the prepper surface, and then get our new rotor on and start hanging stuff on. Now the reason I'm wanting to do that is we're actually going to go around and do all four corners and get all the new calipers and everything on, get the lines attached to the calipers, so then we can do um, do the new hoses at the body itself. So my goal is to have a minimum amount of time to where the brake system is open. Granted, we're going to be changing the fluid out in this and going from a dot three to a dot four, anyways, uh, which we'll show you here in a little bit. Um, but it just keeps that much air out of the system. So that being said, I'm going to shut up and go get this caliper and stuff off and get this side tore apart. And reuse. Don't forget to keep your hardware because you're going to reuse it. Because that's the beauty of these uh, with this setup is the new calipers just bolt right up, no special brackets or nothing needed, and you reuse the type of hardware. All And just voila. Even though we're not going to reuse those hoses and stuff, at least, you know, it's good habit to you never want to just leave a caliper hanging like that because you can destroy, you might not think you did, but you did destroy a hose and end up with all kind of breaking issues. But now we're going to get this off. Notice we got a little bit of crud and stuff on here. Um, we want to make sure that's all good and clean. So uh, it's a good time now to check your hubs and make sure you know, those feel pretty good. That's actually something I'm going to come back later on and change. Uh, but at almost $400 a pop, that's going to wait. So, anyway, feels pretty good and clean. 
Uh, we're going to clean up that surface and we're going to start actually going back together with this. Alright, so what you're going to do is these come with an oil coating on them while they're sitting on the shelf and like a wax kind of paper to keep them from rusting. So you want to make sure you get that off. Um, and what you do is just take this brake clean, spray it around there real good, and then just come around, make sure to wipe it all off really good. And we're just going to dry, and then do the other side. Now we've got it all sprayed down and cleaned up. We've already got our surface cleaned up here for our. Uh, on our hub, what I'm going to do is go ahead and slide a rotor on. And yes, I know, it drives me nuts the way it is rotated, but the factor GM ones are only one part number for the front and one part number for the rear. We were just looking this over, just double checking ourselves again, just to make sure that I ordered it right. The way GM does it, I don't know, it drives me nuts. When you order any power stop or hawks or anything like that, typically we label side to side. Well, I, I got the, the air ducts in the front for the brake cooling, so um, it'd be what it'd be. So, anyway, when I go to different, maybe set a different set of rotors, maybe it'll be true directional. We'll find out. Anywho, one thing you can do is take one of your lug nuts, because you notice the rotors want to kick out like that, and that's going to fight you while you're trying to um, put your caliper on. Now, I do have a cool little tool for that. I actually just finally got these in. They've been on back order from Snap-on. Little BRHC ones. It's pretty neat. I'm sure you could probably find something on Amazon or whatever. Tool truckers buy it, just bought it. Anyways, what they do, and they're meant to fit different size studs, you just slide it over like that, and it holds your rotor in place. You don't have to mess with lug nuts. But the average Joe working on stuff, lug nuts free, it's already there. But I was just happy to be able to finally use it. Um, that being said, now we can go ahead and work on hanging our new caliper on. Okay, so, um, I believe it was this one, I forget which side, it's been a while, I've had these parts for a bit. can't remember which one I've already swapped over, I believe it was this one for the passenger side. I've already swapped the lines like we talked about earlier, they're just like a 10 millimeter or 3 eighths. Um, you just, it's a little just line nut, you take it loose, take your bleeders out and you can swap this over and move your bleeders there to whichever side you need. Like I said, they're the same part number. The writing's the same way. The only difference in part numbers originally was where the lines were in GM. I obviously quickly did away with that. So why stop two parts on the shelf and you can just do one? Makes sense. Now what we're going to do is take our um, power stop move. And we're going to take a little bit and smear it in around the face of the pistons and then we're going to take on these pins and we're going to put some lube around there when we put these pins in because these are the guide pins for the little bucklets as I like to call them you see down here where they got the little cradle and the spring assembly now these new calipers already come with these the power stop kit came with new guides anyways I'm going to keep those as extra if you them in the box um, but anyways, they just sit down, of course, you want your pad material. You don't want to be the butt of the joke or be that, you know, customer states video where you put your pad in backwards. Don't be that guy. So anyways, slide it down in after you've put some of the lube on the face of the uh, piston. You don't want to get crazy. You don't want a bunch of that lube because, yes, it is a high viscosity and it will stay up under heat. But you don't want to go smear it anywhere because the last thing you want is any of that lube getting between the face of the pad and the rotor. So they'll sit down in there like that, and then we'll end up getting our pins. Like I said, they just you can see where they just thread in on the sides, and we'll tighten those down. But I'm going to go ahead and get these lubed up, go ahead and get this caliper mounted, and then we'll go ahead and go from there. And by the way, these two bolts here are 125 foot-pounds for the front and for the rear is what you want to torque these brackets down to. Now we're ready to hang our calipers.
All right, so now that we got our caliper on, we got our bolt started, went ahead and snugged them down with the ratchet. Uh, what I'm going to do is I've got the torque wrench set to 125 foot pounds, like I was saying earlier. We're going to go ahead and torque those two bolts down, and then we can go ahead and start putting our pads and our pins in. So, now that you've got your caliper mounted and torqued down, we've got the pistons already, uh, the face of those moved up. Now you can put your cute little puppets in and slide those bad boys in. And it might help a little bit to put some of the pins in, I'm not sure. Alright, so it seems to be easier to start at the bottom and work your way up. So I'm going to start doing side to side and work my way up and then come back and torque those down. So what I've done is we use a 3M clear silicone paste. Um, we'll leave the part number in, um, in the description for you guys. What we're doing is taking these pins like this out of the kit. Which these go in between the pucks. You can see the little indentations in there. And they go in between them and you've got this little roller sleeve that kind of helps move around with it and this part threads in to the caliper itself so we're using that 3m clear silicone paste purely because we just don't have a whole lot of stuff with the power stop you know this, the packet's kind of small uh, and at 3m stuff works great we use it all the time and we're using a little bit of anti-seize on these because you've got a steel bolt going into an aluminum caliper you're going to have some corrosion issues so thinking ahead to keep that from happening. So we're gonna go ahead and like I said, work our way through and then we'll go ahead and torque those down in a minute. I'm gonna put just enough on there. You don't wanna get crazy, you know, getting that stuff all over your rotors and your pads, but a little bit of uh, anti-seize that came out kind of goopy, probably a little too much, but uh, just a dab on that clear silicone. Said we'll slide our pad in here and then start our pin and just thread it in you know um, so yeah my theory is like we were just talking about talking about buddy Josh over there is starting at the bottom um, and work your way up so this is going to be a lot easier uh, as you go so I get this snug down and it's anti seize so you're going to get it everywhere so make sure you got a few good shop rags to where you can Wipe that stuff off. All right, so once you've got your, your pins in and, and snug down and everything wiped off, we're gonna go ahead and go back and put, uh, or torque these down to uh, 30 foot pounds. Now we can work on putting our brake loads on. All right, so now we got our new stainless steel, uh, or steel braided lines. Um, what we got to do is we've got what's called a banjo fitting. So you got a bolt here that's hollow. You see where the fluid comes in and out of the side port and through the main body. You got your copper washers. So you're going to have one out here like this. And for the fronts, we're going to be using the ones because if you look in the kit, there's some that are angled a lot more than the other. 
In the front, we're going to be using ones that are angled more. So it's going to go through like that. Then you're going to have your copper washer on the other side. And that's general rule of thumb for any banjo fitting, banjo bolt setup. So now we're going to go ahead and thread this into the caliper. And the spec here, it's talking about 12 to 14 foot pounds, not inch pounds, foot pounds. I think the GM factory spec shows like almost 30 something or whatever. You're snapping that bolt off before you get to that 30 pounds. So uh, just pay attention to what your spec card says with it. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and for right now, just bolt these onto the calipers. And we're going to do the front and rear. And then we're going to come back and go ahead and mount those up onto the car and change out there with these brackets and the clips. Like I said before, I want to keep this system sealed as long as possible. So now we're working on the rears. A lot of it's going to be the same thing, just a little bit different, you know, obviously different rotors and calipers. Same basic thing, you've got your rotor, your caliper, your mounting bracket, your inboard and outboard pads. Uh, this one's a little single piston. You've got your two bolts in the back, same thing as the front, they're 21 millimeter, or 21 millimeter uh, is what you need for a socket. These things are tight as all get out, so you're going to need a good half inch, either breaker bar or a long ratchet to get in there. So we're going to take those two off. Uh, same thing as the front, hang the caliper out of the way, pull our rotor off, clean our surface up, get our other rotor clean, go ahead and get it on, and we can go ahead and start mounting the, uh, the caliper on. Alright, so now we got our caliper off, you know, we, look, so we take off this whole unit, um, we got our hub surface cleaned up here, we, um, we've got our um, uh, we checked our, this is our, your parking brake shoe here, it's like a whole horseshoe thing. Uh, everything looks good here, you can check, make sure, you know, kind of feel if it's loose. You know, if you've got, you got any issues with your parking brake, seems like you gotta pull it really, really up to get it to tighten or whatever, uh, you can adjust it down here. Um, but, you know, mine's pretty good where it's at, so I'm, I'm fine with that, I'm gonna leave it be. So I'm gonna go ahead and get, uh, or I've already blew all this off with the air hose, already got my rotor cleaned up. Now, we can go ahead, slide that bad boy on, throw a little clip on there, retain our rotor, and now we can go ahead and work on hanging our new caliper that we've already got looped up. Okay, so just like the front, um, you want to make sure, you know, at the back, one of the sides you got to swap the lines over, uh, and it was the other side, so we want to make sure your crossover lines on the bottom and your bleeders are up top. Now, I was going to mention too earlier, there are two different ways of doing this. You can put the pins in and pop your little padlets in or whatever. Um, that can be a little bit easier way to do it if you want to do it that way. Uh, it can be a little bit fun getting over the rotor sometimes, being that these are new and the pistons are kind of out a little bit. Um, but two, it gives you good practice. So let's say down the road, when you're, you're going to do a track day, you obviously don't want to use your daily pads at the track because you're really going to smoke to them real quick. So you get like an actual, you know, like the power stop actual track day pads or, you know, hot pads or whatever. Um, they give you some good practice on knowing how to change these things out. So that being said, we've already got these lubed up just like the front. And we're going to go ahead and mount it down. And just like the front, 125 foot pounds on the two mounting bolts. Alright, so we're going to change, it's changing things up a little bit back here. Uh, we're going to do away with this factory bracket and use the bracket in the kit. You got a 13 millimeter uh, nut here on the uh, brake line coming in, and then you got a 10 millimeter here for the bracket. So what we're going to do is we've already got that loose. So we're going to take that 10 millimeter, and we go ahead and take this old caliper and hose out of the equation, and we can start using the new hardware in the kit.
and it should come off like that. Now you're going to want to reuse the old bolt, but you're going to do a new bracket that comes with the kit. But go ahead and start it and get it finger tight because um, it's going to make it a lot easier starting it that way than trying to fight it up there. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take your clip here. I'm going to set my bolt here out of the way. You're going to take your clip and you've got the leading edge here. And this tab here is going to be facing down. And that's going to slide up in here underneath. There's a slot in the new hose. Uh, it's going to be a little stiff going in, but that way I got it started. Now we'll go ahead and start our bolts up here and go ahead and get that down, and then we'll go ahead and finish pushing that in all the way. Okay, so now this is what you should look like. You've got your L bracket like this. you got your 10 millimeter bolt tightened down. You've got this clip pushed in all the way and bottomed out, and then you come down here and tighten your 13 millimeter line nut, and you're good to go, and you just do the, um, the exact same for the other side in the rear. All right, so... Now we got our uh, 13 millimeter line nut here, just like in the back. We got 10 millimeter, just like in the back as well, and a bracket there. We're gonna do away with that bracket. This whole line assembly will come off, just like the back, and then we'll put hook our new line up with our new bracket and all, and our clip and everything, and everything will be hunky dory, so. All right, so what you want is something that looks like this. Make sure your, your line's not twisted up and it's routed over like this way out of your way, out of way where your wheel's gonna be. You've got your bracket here, your 10 millimeter tightened down, and you got your 13 and then your 17 down here. Go ahead and snug that down. Like I said, make sure it's twisted to look like that. And now what we can do is go ahead and go through and bleed out the brakes. All right, so we've got the, um, we've got the lines all connected up. We went around. Uh, remember, when you're bleeding your brakes, you always want to start at the furthest from the master cylinder, so your passenger rear, then go to your driver's rear, then come to your passenger's front, and then finally your driver's front. Um, you can gravity bleed them if you want. Um, being that those things are massive and take a ton of fluid, it's going to be a while. Um, anyways, you want to go, remember you got two bleeders on each one, you, you want to bleed out both bleeders on each caliper to make sure you get all the air out of them. Uh, if you have access to a scan tool um, or somebody that does, you can go there and hook up and do the automated bleed on the ABS system. But if you go through and do it like we did where you have it open just a very minimal amount of time, one corner at a time, you're really probably going to be fine. Um, but other than that, that's pretty much it. Get your wheels back on, uh, torque those to 100 foot-pounds. Um, of course, when you're bleeding it, you want to make sure that you keep fluid in your reservoir. You don't want to run it and dry or you're going to really have a bad time. Uh, you get air in the system and you're going to have a hell of a time getting that out. Um, other than that, um, there is a break-in procedure uh, on these uh, power stops. They normally put it right on their box. Um, yeah, of course, it depends on what pads you use, but it's a good general um, guide uh, for burnishing in more performance brakes like that. Um, anytime you do new brakes, it's always a good idea to burnish them in. Maybe not to such an extreme process for regular everyday brakes, but you know, for a higher performance like the Z26 or whatever formula we got on wings, uh, it's a good idea. So, that being said, that's a wrap. I, it's late tonight. Thank God for all the buddies that came to help me tonight. Otherwise, it'd probably be four in the morning instead of midnight. Thanks again, Josh and Tori, the guy behind the camera that won't ever. I think about grabbing the camera and just turning around on him, but he'd probably kill me. So. Uh, but anyways, uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, we had a blast. It's great to finally be able to do this. I've been piecing these parts together for like over a year. So I'm excited to see how different the car is. Um, afterwards, I'm expecting quite a night and day difference going from more out stock brakes to these brand new, you know, much more massive, meaty brakes. So uh, don't forget to check out my dad's channel, uh, MacGyver's Workshop, our sister channel over there. They do a ton of crazy stuff. He's doing a bunch of stuff over there right now. We're storing a truck. All kind of cool stuff. You never know what he's going to be working on. And also remember, until next time, stock is not an option.
What's up guys? Thanks for watching again. Uh, if you guys like the video and you think you want to be a part of this team, uh, we're growing like crazy. We're hiring now. We are looking for a full-blown ASC certified technician, maybe somebody at least on the master level and everything, you know, they can do diagnostics, AC, all that kind of stuff. So if you're interested and think you'd be a good fit in this team, we've got all the information below to uh, contact us. And remember, until next time, stock is not an option.